Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and I'm here for the very first time with Pastor Kevin McPhail. Woo! <laughs> He's kind of nervous, so everyone give him a round of applause. <laughs> Kevin's the one who does all the behind the scenes. He edits all the videos. He basically does everything at the church. He's an assistant pastor, maintenance guy. He's also a bass player. Kevin's amazing. Kevin has his wife, Rachel McPhail. She's amazing. She's amazing. A lot more amazing. Than, no, I'm not going to say that no, than you. Yep. But she is. And then baby Mary. So mm -hmm. Kevin's a new dad. Congratulations. Yep. All right. Well, we are going to interview a band. So this is a sister trio, um, Lulu, Maggie, and CJ. And so we're excited to be able to talk about heavy metal. I know a lot of people get freaked out in the church when they hear that because they're like, that's demonic. So we'll be explaining um, they'll be actually talking about why they do what they do and um, they have the message and sharing the gospel. So we're excited to be discussing that today. So without further ado, it's my honor to welcome Gold, Frankincense, and Myrrh. Girls, thanks so much for joining us today. Hi! <laughs> Thank you for having us. Yes. So you guys are GFM, the GFM band, Gold, Frankincense, and Myrrh. So can you guys first introduce yourself? We'll start with the oldest. Say your name, age, and then what instrument you play in the band? Yeah, I'm CJ, I'm the oldest, I play guitar, and I'm 22. I'm Maggie, I play bass, and I do lead vocals. Me and CJ kind of go back and forth with them. Mm -hmm. um, and and scream. Yeah, I do the screams, yeah. <laughs> and I'm 20. Right. And my name's Lou, I'm the drummer, and I'm 17. Awesome. Well, we are thankful to have you guys on, and we first also want to talk about um, just about metal for those who don't understand because we're going to be talking about that today for those who are like can you really like listen to metal and that and be a christian and they'll say all this stuff i love your guys's response to it and but um actually first we're going to start with your upbringing so can you tell us a little bit about your upbringing where you were born and then how you had your relationship with the lord social security numbers <laughs> yeah accounts, all that. please all of that <laughs> oh, right. yeah so me and cj actually were born in like Kansas City, which mm -hmm. is way far away from where we live. Um, than our parents when we were like literally like one and two. Yeah, we moved to Jacksonville, Florida, and so Lou was born there a few years after I was born because she's four years younger than me, mm -hmm. and it is one ahead of me. So we we've basically lived our entire life in Florida and just kind of grew up in you know a, a Christian home. We grew up going to church, and through that you know. I feel like people tend to get saved really young, um, but then me personally, but then also CJ, she has a similar story. We pretty much around the same time started to really question whether or not we really were saved because, you know, we were really young. We were like, did, how, did we really know what we were doing? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> we were talking about, we were kind of, kind of slow when we were that age. <laughs> um, so I was eight and CJ was nine, I think. Maybe, maybe a little older because I was in sixth grade. Maybe you were 12. Yeah. Maybe I think I was, yeah, I think I was 11 and you were 12. Mm -hmm. And so we went and talked to our pastor of the church that we were going to at that time. And we ended up rededicating our life to Christ. And he talked through the whole um, just like situation. It was like, well, this is what it really means to be a Christian. And, you know, if you're doubting that, we can definitely rededicate your life to Christ, go through it again, make sure, because this is an eternal like decision that you're making and you need to make sure you know where you're going to go and you need to make sure that you seriously believe in this stuff and it's not just you're repeating what your parents said. Mm -hmm. And so we rededicated our lives to Christ and we got baptized again just to show everybody like this is we really mean at this time. <laughs> like we are hundred percent sure like I am going to heaven. Like there's no question, no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. And I think we fully understood it there. Yeah. So yeah. we go back and forth like, well maybe we got saved when we were younger, but just to be clear, yeah. like, that's when we understood what we were talking about, yeah. and I feel like we were old enough to, mm -hmm. like, this is our own. And yeah. then we started playing instruments when we were all super young. Mm -hmm. um, our parents wanted us to play piano for a couple years when we turned five, uh, and then we all kind of split off and did our own thing, and we started to get into the instruments that we're into now. And one thing led to another. We started playing cover songs, mm -hmm. and then eventually we started doing originals, and then in about 2016, 2017, we started uh, touring, and we haven't stopped since. So we've been <laughs> touring, and even during like the COVID season, we still found ways to go on tours, whether it was virtually or just spread out shows. Um, and it, it's been it's been really fun, and it's definitely our passion. And 
it's not only a passion for music, but a passion for people. And the whole reason we do the band, um, ever since we were really young, the whole reason we always did it was to share the gospel and to share God's love. Mm-hmm. And it's not something we want to force down people's throats because we don't just play Christian venues or churches. We play any anywhere and everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, but our message always stays the same, and we always proclaim Christ's name from the stage. And we definitely encourage uh, one-on-one conversations at our merch table, and we will pray for people and have just open discussions, whether they have questions or they uh, disagree with something we believe in, and that's totally fine. Like we don't expect everyone to agree with us, uh, but we encourage communication within our um, team within within Team GFM. And we always want to make sure we're doing that because that's the reason we get up every morning. That's the reason we're on tour away from home is to share that message. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. I love that. And I think that the most powerful thing that you guys keep saying is how you need to communicate, especially you guys being sisters. Like, you know, even probably with each other, you have to communicate or there's going to be arguments and fights. But that's just what you even are able to tell the people, like, talk to us, ask us questions. It's okay if you disagree. We just want to hear you say. And then I think I heard CJ in one of um, another interview, and you said how important it is to just pray for others. Like, if they're going for, through something, you just be like, can I pray for you? And how powerful that is because you're realizing it's not anything you guys are doing, but it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that people's lives are changed. And when they do hear the good news, like, it's not because you're trying to work it up. It's just... You give it to the Lord, and you do your best. So that's awesome yeah. you guys do that. And what, I, I wanted to say real quick, I, I like how I – oh, sorry. Are you saying something? Are you, oh, yeah. We were just saying that communication was like we had to learn that through in ourselves yeah. before we could help other people. And through this past year, we realized that we – could reach so many more people, but we had to fix like our relationship first. So everyone's always questioning like, how can you do it? How can you be on the road? You're three sisters, you don't fight all the time. You should be fighting. It's like, yeah, we do fight a lot. And uh, we've learned how to like come back together through those and communicate through them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're always a big proponent for just to talk things out. out. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's cool that you guys go to your merch table and talk to people afterwards because a lot of Christian bands will start off doing that, um, and then eventually they get too big, and then they stop coming out and talking to people. Yeah. And I know there's a balance there, you know, because once you get so big, you know, then, then you're not going to be able to do anything. But I think it's important to to always try and um, keep that that part of you guys, you know, that, that conversation part, to be able to talk to people and share with them because that's a lot of times people will connect with the music, right? Like like me when I first discovered you guys. I was really impressed by the music, right? And then uh, that leads people to then listen to more, and then they listen to your lyrics to find out what you're about, what you're talking about. And then when they get the opportunity to talk to someone behind the lyrics, behind the music, um, it, it just gives it gives the audience right a better opportunity to really understand who you guys are and get to know you guys. Um, and so I think that's really cool that you guys do that. And hopefully, as you continue to grow and become more well known, you can continue that aspect of it because um, it's so sad. I've seen, um, I went to quite a few uh, metal shows when I was younger, um, in my late, early adulthood, like 18 to the early 20s. And um, when we got to talk to bands that would come out to their merch table, we got to talk to them, it kind of left us with liking them even more. (laughs) Like we we appreciated them and we we just liked their music even more, even if I wasn't that into their music necessarily. Um, And and so it's a real special experience when you get to do that. So that's, that's cool. That's awesome. Okay, and then oh, um, she's saying something. oh, I'm so sorry. Did not say, it. say it. Yeah. I say we always try to um, stay. A uh, recent festival we just played, we stayed for like seven to eight hours just wow. talking to people. Wow. And we know that we won't always be able to do it, so that's why we spend as much time as we can because it is like a safety precaution when you get bigger. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, it's not as safe to go out to your table, but we also do lives pretty much every day <laughs> to where we still get to talk to people, um, mm-hmm. even if we can't see them in person, which is what we did during COVID a lot. Um, we'll have people email us, send us messages on all social media. Yeah. It's just a, to respond to another way to just to be able to talk to people. So even if we aren't able to go to our merch table one day, we still will always do lives and still communicate. And we answer our own DMs, so it's not like a business oh, yeah. responding. It's yeah. just... Uh, yeah, and that's really cool because I think that's the scary thing when you get into um, getting more popular and people, they start 
taking in more of the fame instead of realizing like why they're doing it. It's for to bless others and to glorify the Lord. And so I think it's just cool that you're like, I don't care how big or small, but making everyone feel known and loved because they don't have to feel like, oh, I have to be famous or have a lot of followers. And then GFM will respond to me. Like, that's what I thought because I'm like, we're not the biggest podcast, but the fact that you guys responded, it's like, praise God for that mm-hmm. because it's still reaching people that you wouldn't be able to. And it's like, just realizing it in that way, it shows like the Bible says, those who are greatest here will be least in heaven. Those who are least here will be greatest. And he didn't come for those who are well and thought they're great, but he came for those who are sick and broken. And I see that you guys see that and you want to help people. So it's really encouraging, but and that's um, cool. Sorry, real quick. Yeah. I think it's cool that you guys are using modern technology yeah, um, yeah. to continue to do that. Like that's yeah. a good point. Um, when we first, when I first got into metal and stuff, it was back when we'd pay pay for texts, you know, <laughs> ten cents a text message or whatnot. So we didn't have Instagram Live and you know all yeah. that stuff to be able to talk to um, artists and whatnot. So yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, so. that's so cool. All right. So did you guys? Were you always into? like metal or rock like how did you guys get into that and then who had the idea for gfm and where did the name come from and all the backstory with the band can you tell us that yeah so we actually didn't really even know that metal existed for a while and we didn't know like that whole like we thought that was weird and anytime someone listened to that type of music it's like what is that yeah. but our dad was a a, like 80s hair metal band mm-hmm. fan and loved like Molly Crew and Kiss and so he was really big into the stage performance and so when we started doing like cover songs and stuff we found Skillet we're like oh this is really heavy music <laughs> and so we were like trying to cover them and um, we went to a festival called Welcome to Rockville in 2014 and we saw bands like um, Bring the Horizon and Asking Alexandria and like heavy bands like that and we're like whoa mm-hmm. this is crazy and like the way the crowd responded and how it was just this big like ball of energy we're like we want to do that we have to figure out how to do that and people told us started telling us we sounded like flyleaf and so we were looking up and we're like oh my word girls can scream that's yeah. pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> try to do that maggie and so we did and so we just progressively kind of got heavier and heavier as time went on and our dad always was like you have to have that stage presence I love these bands because their music was good, but they were cool on stage. And so you have to do that. And so it just kind of grew from there. And, um, mm-hmm. It's still kind of growing. We're finding new bands. And just because there's so much music out there now, it's, really is. you can find something new every single day. And so we really try to pull from anything we listen to. Yeah. <laughs> we really like kind of genre bending and throwing in things that shouldn't belong in this genre, but we do it because we don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Just it's, it's just fun, and we like to keep you know the rock and the metal music kind of alive and stuff. And we don't want it to be stale, and we want to throw in new stuff. Mm-hmm. And our mom was a very big like supporter of that, even though like they weren't really into the metal at first either. And they're like, "This is kind of strange. Are you sure you want to go that heavy?" <laughs> and then the more we started doing it, she's like, "Oh no, I actually kind of like this." So now she listens to heavy bands as well. <laughs> and and it was actually her idea for Gold Frankenstein Summer and. Uh, she's like it's just they were the three gifts given to Jesus and you three are gifts given to me from God and so it's we tie back into our faith and you know people can ask us what GFM stands for and so it's a great conversation lead in and a lot of the festivals that we're playing people don't even know what gold frankincense summer is they just think it's an essential oil <laughs> and, yeah. uh, so it's a great way to like start that conversation of, well, do you know who Jesus is? Mm-hmm. And like I said, our dad was a really big 80s fan. And so Guns N' Roses is always been by GNR. He's like, you got to have the actual name. Go by GFM. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. And then we started getting playing on the radio and everyone's like, you know, we're going to say GFM because this is too long. I cannot pronounce right. <laughs> so it gets on kind of stuck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love it. That's awesome. And it's cool, too, because I like that you said we kind of keep it fresh because I was listening to some artists i think it was like some albums of august burns red i'm like they kind of all sound the same and i was just like it's good like i love constellations and stuff i was listening to that but i'm like they kind of sound the same and so it's cool when i was listening to your guys it's like very different every song so it's cool Mm -hmm. that you guys incorporate that because i was telling that to kevin i'm like sound the same i don't know the difference Mm -hmm. but it's cool that you guys do that but 
Did you have any other questions? Kevin? What What are some? So you mentioned Flyleaf, yeah. um, Skillet. Uh, what are some other influences um, mm. for you guys? Um, definitely a more modern one is a day to remember. They were really big when we were starting to get into the heavier stuff because they added a lot of like pop punk influences into the screamo type stuff. And so we're like, oh, well, that's something we've never heard before. We want to try doing that. And it, it's easier for us to sing too because our vocal range is pretty high as it is. And so <laughs> they were, I was like, oh, yeah, people can sing like this. That's cool. We'll do yeah. that. Um, just, I don't know, there's artists like of every genre. Yeah. <laughs> Lou listens to a lot of like marshmallow and he's like a DJ and she loves him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There was this artist called Lights. Um, she's just a female like solo artist and she's kind of alternative. It's like, I don't know, like a weird like pop alternative. It doesn't really fit into the genre, but she produces all her own stuff and she writes all her own stuff and she's very involved. Like she created a whole comic book that went with her album and she like drew all the artwork and everything and so she's just an inspiration for us just like work wise it's like we want to be there one day where we can like do all of this Mm -hmm. that's super cool just to be doing everything and have your hands in every part of the project because we're still learning how to do some of that (laughs) i also want to talk about like your stage presence like you're talking about what it's like what it's like seeing the fans because i know i've seen um, I don't think I've ever really been to a concert like that, but just watching the videos, I'm like, it's intense. Like, I would think I would break my neck seeing what you <laughs> girls do and destroy my vocals. I saw one IGTV and you were doing warm ups. So I'm like, I should probably do warm ups because me and my brother lead worship at the church. And I can't even say I play bass, especially after seeing you play bass, Maggie. I'm like, I can't even say Kevin plays bass, but I don't. I just learned Kevin taught me like one day and after. Since all I was in I know. eighth grade, that's all I've gone with. But you guys are amazing. Um, so what is it like being on stage? You guys have your cheerleading outfits. So I know you also go by Beauty Core, which I think you guys made that up, right? You started that. So just talk about the whole stage presence and everything that goes on, on during concerts. Yeah, it definitely takes, we call it boot camp, before, <laughs> because you have to eat right, you have to prepare your body and you have to stretch, um, you have to figure out what you're going to do. There's so much that, that goes into it, because for us personally, we love it being such an explosive mm-hmm. thing, mm-hmm. and we love head banging, we love running around stage. I jump off into the crowd, and I mosh <laughs> with everyone. Like, I run well, like, with our backs by playing, um, and then we our necks. Like, we'll pull our whole back, so we have to, <laughs> like, take care for each other and, like, massage it for like, weeks at a time, and then uh, we have to make sure our shoes are right, and we have everything that fits right. Um, it's cause... basically like all of like, I know the Olympics are going on right now and I'm seeing all of like the videos of them like training for it. And I'm like, hmm, that's what we do. That looks kind of... <laughs> it takes a lot because the shows definitely wear you out. Like yeah. we play like this past, especially summer because it's so hot and we stand at our table so we can make sure that we talk to every single person like before and after the show. So uh, we played, it was KCF and Indiana Mm -hmm. and uh, we got there at like nine o'clock in the morning and it was already like beating down really hot and played at 11 o'clock at night and so we were standing there for like 12 hours and then uh, we play the show and then afterwards we stand there and then we had to pack everything up and then we go to the next show (laughs) and so it's like if your body is not mentally and physically prepared and even spiritually because we are draining ourselves like giving everything we have yeah. so you have to be prepared to be able to help mm-hmm. people it's not just gonna be like oh show up and then hey what's up everybody <laughs> like, you, I love you too and then you leave you know like there's so much that goes yeah. into it but we're grateful that we can do that mm-hmm. that's awesome kevin was that you your do? dad in the background <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's working a gfm dad yeah <laughs> he's famous um so yeah that's amazing i know that i've tried to do that like I guess joking and I'm like I have a long neck so I definitely <laughs> pulled some neck muscles so you guys are awesome we've learned like to use our backs and mm-hmm. so you're like using your knees and like bending your knees and like bending your back more than your neck and so it looks like you're doing a lot more but it's less effort. uh we've also accepted the fact that we will probably not be able to walk as well when we're like 80 or 90 but you and know we'll probably have bone spurs that's, and that's down it's fine. Yeah. We don't, we don't have to face that, that <laughs> back right now. Exactly. That's awesome. Um, okay, so 
I also want to get into like the people that you're reaching out to. So what does it look like when you do share, um, just talk about Jesus and the gospel and then the response you see with these kids? I mean, it's not probably all kids. You guys have probably a wide range of people and girls and boys. So, or men and women, sorry. But, um, so what is it like? What's it been like the, the conversations you've had with people and, um, have you been able to like reach people or you talked about obviously your merch table, but what is that like? There's several different like conversations and people that we meet that it goes like every time we play, there's always mm-hmm. something new where either people want to talk about us, like why we do what we do, um, we're like an older generation or um, people who just want to debate or talk or we'll have the opportunity to share our witness. Um, and then one of the biggest things that we came across, especially playing like a lot of festival wise, um, is everyone deals with uh, depression, anxiety, mental illness, um, feeling lost. And that is in like the Christian festivals. And so uh, we are like really burdened, but grateful that we can have the opportunity to share our truth um, because we stood, I think it was at Life Festival, you're saying we stood for seven hours and it was one at, at one out of every five people that we talked to. And I can just say like, we've talked to like thousands of different people and um, everyone struggled with something, um, whether it was like attempted of suicide or had thought about it or felt lost. Um, so the biggest thing we wanted to know is like, it's okay that you're feeling that way. We're in a fallen world. And uh, that is like kind of Satan's attack right now mm-hmm. to get at us mentally because we're all great, like physically and we're, everyone's a community, but yet, and you're supposed to be perfect on social media. So mm-hmm. don't share or share that you are uh, like dealing with something inside or you're going through anything because then you're weird. And so no one likes a weirdo. Mm-hmm. Well, everyone is dealing with something and it's okay. and just we are so grateful because people just come up to us and share their stories like really heavy stuff and so to be able to pour biblical wisdom back into them and not just well this is what i think you should do or this is what some famous person did so you this should help you in a five-step program like (laughs) but here's some biblical verses and here's because we carry king james bibles with us full ones so if you don't have a bible at home here you go here's an opportunity please read through these chapters that helped us personally and here's our story um we're also just there to listen because yeah meet a lot of people Mm -hmm. who don't really have someone they can trust or that they just feel comfortable with opening up to. And a lot of the times that's just what someone someone needs is to mm-hmm. uh, vent about just their life and what's been going on. And it's it's been a cool experience, especially this tour, to, to be able to be validation. that person and yeah. to be able to just have open ears and listen without judging them and just kind of being there for them. And even our parents, like people come up to our parents and speak to them um, if they don't feel comfortable speaking to us. And we just come back to the van at the end of the night with so many stories of how God was able to work in uh, through us. And that's always what we want to be able to say, you know, we don't want to come back to the van with nothing because, you know, we might play the best show to the best crowd and it wouldn't be fulfilling if we didn't get to pray or speak with someone about Christ. So mm-hmm. that's, that's always what we try to keep the focus. And so far that we've been able to do so. And we're really grateful mm-hmm. for that. And then speaking on the topic of where you were mentioning earlier, do people like question about what we do? And do you have controversy with that? Um, within the same festival, we had two instances where it went either one or both ways. It was someone who came to us and just wanted to yell at us and mm-hmm. say that we were Satan and say that Satan overtook us and like a whole <laughs> bunch of nonsense, but they didn't want to talk about it. And then two, we had someone who was from the older generation and came to us and just had questions. They're like, mm-hmm. I don't care like what you dress or anything like that. Um, he's like, but I'm just, what is your mission so I can feel more comfortable supporting you? Mm-hmm. And you're like, yeah, let's totally talk about it. Mm-hmm. And we shared our mission. We shared why what we do. We shared um, like biblical verses that can back up like why metal is okay. There's nothing wrong in with having different um, genres of music. Like you can have a, the same awful lyrics in a Christian contemporary song, but not be Christian. Yeah. Like they're all in a pop generation. Like it just, it doesn't matter what genre it is. It's just what's the lyrics are edifying to Christ and how you're affecting people. And so we were like, went to a long discussion. He was like, oh, I just feel so much better. My spirit <laughs> is um, great. And so he brought a whole bunch of people to the concert. Yeah, he came and watched yeah. us. And he was like our biggest that fan. Awesome. Like that's a great way to just share within yeah. anybody's relationship. 
um, because everyone's valid to their opinion. Everyone has the right to um, to assume and judge, like everyone does. Like we do that to anyone. So don't feel like, well, you can't do that to me. Yeah. And um, but to have a common ground and just to be open to let yeah, us share open. our views. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's open. such a beautiful. Thing. Everyone has the right to be wrong, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. Right, Kevin. <laughs> Um, and it's cool, too, because like you were saying that because um, we wanted to do this episode, too, because a lot of people have asked us, like, how can you how can people listen to metal or those sounds or like those sounds straight up sound like demons? I'm like, first of all, have you heard a demon? I don't know. But I uh, like it makes it like you're saying, because it's like a lot of times people get afraid of when they don't know and that's why I love that you're like hey we're gonna give you the verses we're gonna talk about that and also to know that it's not for everyone you're not trying to force it like you have to accept me you have to like this they don't have to but the thing is is they don't have to just make sure everyone else knows how bad it is it's like no that's not the point of it and you're like also I think you're reaching people that they will never be able to reach out to and that's what's so cool you go into the highways and byways that Jesus, right? He was with people who are prostitutes, tax collectors. You guys are a lot of times with a lot of hurting kids because I think that even when people get into this type of music, I see like they're literally crying out, like screaming because they're angry. They don't know what to do. And so when you can say, I love like the thought of two Christian metal because it's like you can cry out to the Lord too. Like King David, he was crying out to the Lord. And yeah. he. I think we just look at like, the like beautiful church with like all the stained glass windows like you have to be and it's cool like we're supposed to definitely be reverent and respect god and that's like we all know that but also there's times where we can communicate with the lord like we can talk to him and cry out to him that we're hurting and in pain so can you guys share like maybe just a little bit more of the things that you will tell people or some verses or things that you say like this is why we do it and actually i'm gonna read this this is what you guys have I encourage everyone to also check out your website, which is um, the gfmband.com. But you talk about the gospel and you say that um, the ask the mainly asked question that people say is, if a man dies, shall he live again? Right. In Job 14, 14. And I think that's really good because that's what people are wondering. Like, where am I going to go when I die? You know that people are laying in their beds at night and be like, what is going to happen once I die? Like, am I just going to be worm food? Am I going to come back as a lion and tiger? A lot of people believe in um, reincarnation. But I love this verse. It's Hebrews 9.27. It says, um, just as people are destined to die once, and after that, they face judgment. So you can tell people, too, like, you're going to stand before a holy God, and this is why we're giving you the opportunity to know the good news, that you, it's not about being a good person. You also say that in the gospel, and you're, website you're like it's about realizing that you're not a good person right no one is righteous no not one but that's why we need jesus and that's why we need to accept him as our lord and savior so i talked a lot but can you share a little bit more of your guys's message and why you do what you do yeah um it goes into again many different avenues because we all like i am very 100 percent encouraged maggie could witness someone and 100 percent encouraged lulu could witness someone with any topic Mm -hmm. and it really goes into some deep theological things so but we always try to present the gospel whenever we talk to someone Mm -hmm. um and go to verses to back that up because testimonies are great and we love to connect with people through our personal experiences but hebrews 4 12 says the word of god is the spirit uh, dividing asunder so that is what's going to really reach people um so the fact that like we are he- i was hearing lulu go specifically to chapters and to books and quoting scripture and we are talking to people who have all walks of life so i would encourage everyone just to go with grace which is love and truth to anyone i feel like people are so scared to like talk about their faith um, to people who don't believe or to their friends and family, like, well, they're not going to listen to me. We've had people come up that um, are atheists, are (laughs) atheists um, who are openly pagan. We have people who follow us are openly pagan and they follow our Patreon and they listen into the Bible studies we do every month. Mm -hmm. Um, We have uh, like people who different walks of life, people part of the LGBT community, um, people who are uh, transgender, 
um, anyone. And we just, it's a conversation. It's not a scary thing that we're going to like argue and fist fight. It's just, Hey, this is what I believe. And then, um, you go from there when we talk to you, like why we believe the King James Bible, um, is the ultimate truth, why we don't believe in Calvinism, why, um, like why Jesus is fully man and fully God. And he was the ultimate sacrifice. That's the mystery of the God himself. Uh, mystery of the church, why the church is important, because a lot of people talked about how they just left the church because the church people hurt them. And so that's why they, um, they either don't go to church or they aren't a Christian anymore because the people um, that were supposed to be loving, the people that are supposed to be there for them and help them in their time of need were the ones that pushed them away. But then we go to the Bible and it says in Ephesians, like why the church is important and why Hebrews uh, 13, 26, I believe, or Hebrews 11, 26 says, don't forsake the assembly. Um, so like, why is the, why is the church important? Why do we need that? Um, because it's uh, two things to bring glory to God and to edify the saints. And so to continue that perfect oneness where I'm supposed to be leaning on Lula and Lula's supposed to be leaning on me so we can lean on Maggie so she can lean on us so we can that walk in the spirit so the body of Christ the hands and feet can continue to move forward bringing glory to God which is the ultimate reason of the Bible the ultimate um, like why we are still here why are Christians still here when you get saved you don't go up to heaven <laughs> because we're supposed to uh, share the gospel, yeah. win people to Christ, build them up in the faith, and send them out to the same thing, John 17. And when you talk to people and give them a purpose, because no one knows their purpose anymore. Even Christians, you ask them, well, what is your purpose? What is the purpose of the church? Uh, I don't know. Read the Bible. Okay, well, if that's your identity, you should know. And so when we bring these questions to people, and especially to Christians that are hurting, then it's like, oh, okay, having more knowledge in my faith allows me to not question my identity, yeah. equaling helping other areas of life that are trickling off to either causing depression or causing anxiety that um, can be helped. Like we're definitely a big proponent for medication and when it is needed, like Maggie's, um, uh, what is it, having your, we, she's about to have her bachelor's degree and a crisis counseling. Yeah. So she knows all the implications that go through trauma. Um, she's going to even get her doctorates. And so the, we know, well, Maggie knows, like she tells us, <laughs> a lot of the science behind um, yeah. a lot of where the trauma comes from and mm -hmm. what it leads to and the implications yeah. of that. We're big proponents of like social support and yeah. trying to find ways to have proper like coping medications or not medication, coping mechanisms mm -hmm. before you go to medications because mm -hmm. a lot of times medications can make things worse and with a lot of people that we talk to it's that's what sent them into their spiral because their doctor either messed up their medication or their genes just didn't respond right to it and so it sent them into a suicidal episode and a lot of people that we've met they are still like the only reason they're there is because somebody found them mm -hmm. before it was too late. Yeah. And so yeah. we really encourage people to get back involved with the church and in support groups. And mm -hmm. that's why we are so involved with our fans, because we do know the importance of that social support and yeah. just being able to talk to somebody. And then if you know if, if it leads into we can add in the, the biblical implications as well and mm -hmm. um, just to find spiritual healing. Yeah. A lot of times that's what is needed. Like CJ said, a lot of people are hurt by the church. And so we encourage them to give it another chance because people are flawed, but God is not. And so mm -hmm. we, it's not right of us to blame God for something that people did. Mm -hmm. And which is very easy to do. It's yeah, something yeah. that we've talked about with our patrons and our Bible studies a lot. And um, just because it, it, it is such an easy thing to do, but it's through those conversations, we're able to help people see that it's not God's fault. It's just fall on man's fall. And just to bring back the importance and the love of the Bible, Psalm 119, because if we don't, then why did we get into this in the first place? So you only have two people that in the Bible, it says that God loved, um, specifically David, but yet in all of his writings, he has like one of the longest books. He only said he loved God twice, but yet over and over, it says he loved the word. And so we can know that if we want God to, or if we want to show God that we truly love him, we love his word and we show through our actions. We're not saved through our actions, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, lest any man should boast, but we are his workmanship, um, verse 10, so that we can be um, uh, the pe or can bring fruit and we can bring him glory. Because if um, we don't bring fruit, then he will definitely prune us. <laughs> he will prune us. So just bring knowledge back and bring the responsibility and accountability back um, into. Uh, the youth, which are part of the Great Commission, too, mm -hmm. um, and also adults, that if you're not done, you still have to continue, like Paul says, to run that race till yeah. you die, which he did. He got his head caught up. He ran <laughs> till he died. And uh, so just bringing that encouragement and that passion back into people, bringing that fire, because we don't know when tomorrow's too late. You don't know, like with our song, Where Were You? Um, we don't know when our friends and our family that 
we missed that opportunity. We were too lazy to call them up when we saw them struggling. We saw the warning signs that they weren't doing well, and we found out tomorrow that they took their life. Mm -hmm. We don't know we are promised anyone is tomorrow. We don't promise our own lives. And so we needed to make, um, we're just grateful for the opportunity to give people a place where it's a gentle nudge so it's not so controversial. Like we are seeing like pastors on TV telling us what to do and you can't tell them what to do, like that kind of mentality. Which isn't like, it's different ways of sharing it. And we always say that uh, we're just, we're all given different ways um, and different missions from God. And we're not saying our way is the best way. We're not saying yeah, we're the yeah. best uh, people sharing the gospel. We're just grateful for the opportunity God gave us. Mm-hmm. And uh, just another little thing to add on, um, you said that a lot of people go to sleep at night wondering what will happen when they die. Mm-hmm. And I think that whether you're a Christian or not, a lot of people forget that uh, they question their selves now because they question their eternity. Mm-hmm. And they don't realize their purpose now um, because they don't realize how important eternity mm-hmm. is. And Christian, we believe eternity will be in either heaven or hell. Mm -hmm. And um, so you know that that is your eternity as well as others. And so that is your purpose when you wake up and Mm -hmm. when you live your life is to share that gospel because you know how important that is. Like Mm -hmm. we we know the truth and how much we have to hate someone not to share that Mm -hmm. truth. And so we've all had nights where we've been like, you know, I'm, I'm just living the same cycle every day. Like what, what is the purpose? What is the purpose of waking up and going to sleep if it's just going to be the same thing? And it's not until you truly realize that everyone's eternity is real and mm-hmm. it is going to happen at some point, whether it's tomorrow or in a couple of years or in a lot of years, you know, um, eternity is real and heaven and hell is real. And if you don't share the gospel with someone that could be their last day. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, it's the love of Christ that we have in us that we want to share with others because we believe it to be true. And uh, we, we want others to know, know as well. Wow. That was so powerful. And that's, what's cool is like you guys, even though people are like, Oh, you're young or whatever. The reason why, if there's like wisdom or anything inside of you is not because of you, but like you're saying CJ is because of the word of God. Like, that's powerful. That's alive. That's active. And it doesn't matter how smart you are because there's a lot of kids who are like, I'm not smart. I'm stupid. I'm dumb. But I'm like, that's why you just have to read the Bible and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you because there's so many things that people can spend their time focusing on or doing and they still feel empty. But right when you read the word of God, you'll never feel empty. Like, that is living water. Like, it is so powerful and it brings so much peace and joy and I love one of the quotes that someone says, like, all the problems men face are in the covers of the Bible. Like, anything you're facing, it's in the Bible. So it's so powerful. But all right. So well, can I say something real yeah, quick? Yeah, of course. So I want to really encourage you girls that that yeah. um, there is that is really cool that you believe what you believe. You know, yeah. I mean, that, that, that you preach and that you share what you believe. Because uh, Del Tackett, he did uh, the Truth Project a number of years ago, but he had a saying I don't know if it was him or if he got it from someone else. It was, um, do you really believe that what you believe is really real? Mm -hmm. And so many Christian artists, so many Christian bands, even ones that are on the top 40 Christian, you know, radio stations, a lot of them are in it just for the fame. A lot of them are in it for um, money. A lot of them are in it to, you know, have fun all in the name of Christ. And Mm -hmm. it's really sad. It's really depressing to see that a lot of times. And so it's really encouraging to hear you girls, you know, share what you shared right there because it shows that you really do believe what you say you believe Mm -hmm. um back you know 20 years ago probably it's really weird to say but probably about 20 years ago when uh solid state and um uh uh, tooth and nail record companies were really coming up they hosted a lot they had a lot of they signed a lot of the uh earlier christian metal bands and whatnot but when they started really getting big um, they had tons of Christian bands, tr- Christian metal bands. And I remember getting into a lot of them and then you'd, you'd go see them in concert or something. And then you'd hear them, you know, cussing in the backstage or, uh, you know, not really, um, even saying anything about Christ their lyrics, you know, it's kind of like veiled, you know, but they're, you've come to find out later that they're not even Christian or they got signed because one of the members went to church when they're like five. And mm-hmm. so somehow that justifies them as a, a Christian metal band, Christian metal artist. And so it was really disheartening. I stopped listening to metal for quite a while because of that, because it was just so disheartening to to hear all these. One of the bands that I really looked up to that I liked a lot was Under Oath. I'm sure you've heard of them. 
Um, and back in their early days, before I really got into them, and I think, I think only the drummer, if he's still in the band, uh, Aaron Gillespie, is like the original member of the band. But back when it was the original members, they would take, um, you know, their sets and one song, they would eliminate one of the songs from their set and just share the gospel during that time. And that's what uh, I always, I really ad- admired them for doing that, you know, because they're in a setting um, like you guys find yourselves in a lot, right? Where, you know, you've got people from all types of backgrounds, all types of issues. A lot of people listen to you just because they like the sound of the music, maybe like you're saying, a lot of non-Christians do. Yeah. And, uh, and, and there's a perfect opportunity to share Christ and they do that. And then uh, over the years, they started get, getting away from that. Many of the members aren't in the band anymore. And now they say they're not even a Christian band anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, they custom their music. They uh, they just had a release recently. I saw on Spotify with a, a, a cuss word in the title. And, and I read an interview because I looked up and like, are they still Christian? And I think one of the members, um, if not all of them, kind of said, no, we're not a Christian band. You know, I mean, we have some people that believe in God. But, you know, so anyways, my, my point in saying all that is that it's disheartening when you see bands like that, but it's very encouraging to hear you girls. Um, you know, it's not that it's not like you you went to youth group and met each other. I mean, obviously not your sisters. You grew up with each other, but you know, you just got together and started playing music, and you know that you're you, that's it. You know, but you actually believe <laughs> what you say. Oh, you actually <laughs> believe what you say. You believe. You know, and and that's really encouraging to hear. And, and oh, I was saying, it's not like you just say you believe in God, but you guys actually study the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, you, we can tell perfect. by what you guys were saying. And that's really encouraging. And so I just want to encourage you girls in that, that, yeah. um, that that's a, you guys are on a really good footing um, mm-hmm. as you do your music career. So that's really cool. Amen. Keep it up. All right. And I want to get into some of the fun stuff too. So you're touring right now. You guys are obviously sisters. I've seen your vlogs. You guys are hilarious. And Lulu, you got some amazing <laughs> dance skills, let me tell you. Um, you guys are really fun. And so what is it What is it like touring with each other? What is it like, um, I don't know, even do you have some funny stories or things that have happened that you're just – because you probably – there's times where obviously you're going to be discouraged. Like you're going to have rough days and people – like who just put you down and say, oh, this is devil worship. Like you guys are terrible. And obviously we're supposed to then go, like you said, read the word and be encouraged. But sometimes you just have to laugh. Like that's what I've learned. Like you can't take yourself so seriously. And that's why I I forgot which one of you said it, but you said we need to realize like we're all weird. Like the people who I feel like are weird is when they can't admit they're weird. Those are weird people. But just to let kids know, like, yes, you are weird. Yes, we're weird. Yes, we are sinners. But that's why God is so good because he's perfect. So can you tell us some fun stories on the road or also just what's happening now? Are you almost done with your tour? And then Kevin said you're going to Germany. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's just being on tour with us is just a bunch of random yeah. noises and very laughing. Chaotic. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it is very rare that we let any anything really get to us because – Honestly, it might sound very vain, but we just don't care. <laughs> like we don't, we don't let it affect us. Um, we've we've grown up with each other, so yeah. no one can really roast us any harder than we have in our lives. So yeah. it's just a lot of laughing and finding small things to do that just give us a little breath of fresh air, especially on our off days. Like mm-hmm. we love playing shows, so we'll play shows and talk about that. And then we find different things, like uh, we went to like a Bigfoot park, and we went and saw. Um, and so it's just fun things that we enjoy. And then we also, like you said, we vlog, and so it's on our YouTube channel. Um, and we get to post those every Monday, so that if people can't come to shows, uh, they can see it. And also just to show that, like, we are humans. Like, we're not some big band that walks around in a limousine 24 seven. Like, it's no, just like the raw side. We of have the nights where we go into Walmart and go buy a bunch of like random stuff. We play hide and seek in a hotel. Time. We play hide and seek in a hotel. So there's just ways to have fun. And we are kids. So, you know, we're just literally being ourselves and filming it and people find it entertaining. So, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just a bunch of laughs. And, um, and then, yeah, we are, we're on tour for a little bit longer. I believe we yeah. have a month or so left. And, and we actually we do... just booked another show <laughs> <laughs> to add on to the end of the tour. So we yeah. were supposed to have our last show August 16th, but we booked another one, I think the next weekend, yeah. um, up in Wisconsin. And so, and so then yeah. we go to Germany, uh, hopefully that saves 
um, around the fall time, and yeah, we just have well. a bunch of like shows booked uh, and festivals still booked, which is exciting because yeah, we're playing COVID, Uprise for the first we, time. Oh, yeah, yeah, we hadn't been able to play a lot, so being able to play shows is very fun and getting to meet people and vlog again. It's just all a really fun experience. Mm-hmm. And then we start school. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> and then we're on the road. So I think we have to start it before we get home. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's not fun. And Lulu, you're still in high school, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you guys just do it all online then, right? So yeah, we good. go through Liberty. Oh, cool. That's where I went. I went to Liberty University for two years, like for Bible, just Bible college. And I just work at the church. But Liberty University, right? The one in Virginia? That's where? Yeah. Oh. And what is really cool because we um, started doing homeschool when we were all in high school still. And so they have like an online academy mm-hmm. program. And so since we did that, we didn't have to take, like, any college exams. They just enrolled us into Liberty because we had, like, passing grades and stuff. They're like, oh, no, we'll just put you into the college. It's cool. And we're like, works for me. <laughs> yes. That's so nice. That's awesome. Did you have anything else, Kevin? Well, about? yeah. Um, I guess we're going gonna, gonna to backtrack a little. But That's how fine. do you guys stay uh, close to the Lord um, individually in your personal relationships with Christ? Um, and also as a group, as a, as sisters, as a group, because mm-hmm. there's, like I was saying earlier, so many bands start off right, and then they just get caught up with the fame and the music and the even the scene a lot of times because yeah. you are in um, some uh, intense places at time, you know, in regards to the world and yeah, sin. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so how do you guys stay strong and stay close to the Lord through all of that? It definitely is difficult because when you're not around your, like, body, um, your local church, um, that you have that security and you can always go to, and there is something different. I mean, it says don't forsake the assembly, but there's something different to be around believers that have built you up. And so you're just have this confidence. Um, but we definitely watch our churches online, um, stick up with that. That's important. And then, so we're continually learning new things. Um, Maggie does her prayer journal, uh, Mm -hmm. making sure you pray, making sure you're in the Bible specifically. But a big thing is like, adding back onto the openness is that when we learn a new concept or if someone asks a new question to us directly, we bring it to the whole family. So everyone's on the same page now. So yes, we're individually witnessing, witnessing to people and answering questions. Like I just started my own Facebook page just so it's another avenue for more people to uh, like DM me or now I do like biblical truths for today. And so my devotion that I'm studying through, um, then I posted on Facebook just so if that wants to, or if it affects anyone, then yay. Um, uh, but then I bring it up to all the girls. Well, what, we, what would you do if someone asked you this? So now we're all on the same page and then we're all learning and, um, yeah, it's just another way to, again, connect and yeah. then, like, pour the word into each other. Um, so then it's, again, bringing us closer, adding that biblical truth, mm-hmm. and, um, yeah, so that's yeah. it's a really cool. Adding yeah. the word and making sure that uh, we're there for each other. Like CJ yeah. said, uh, if she's there for Maggie, Maggie's there for me, I'm there for CJ. Mm-hmm. And just kind, of, yeah, <laughs> just kind of just kind of remembering that God gives us the strength that we need every day. So mm-hmm. not worrying about... Am I doing this right? Am I doing this right? Just giving God control mm-hmm. really helps. Also giving each other hard love because <laughs> yeah, if you don't, then somebody else is going to. Yeah, then, somebody else is going to. Worse, in a worse way. Yeah, or you don't get corrected and then you yeah. go down a really far path. So that's what we had to learn was humbling each other and then being in a place to be humbled. <laughs> uh, we are very like strong headed, like you can't tell me what to do. And we were talking this with our Patreon Bible study um, that – what was I going through that? We talked about, um, like, oh, because I was struggling. I used to struggle with, like, a lot of anger issues and being very, like, opinionated. And you can't help me. And I'm going to get my way. And that is not – that doesn't help anyone. And so that's only hurting the situation, only hurting me. And um, I had to learn. Like, it really opened to me that Maggie and Lulu were bending their, uh, like, fairness, if I would say, to help me so I can get more than I should. And so when I started understanding that, and I was like – okay, so if they're going to help me and, like, meet me where I am, I'm going to meet them where they are. So this isn't, like, 100%. Like, the world isn't fair, and, like, you know what parents always say? Well, life isn't fair. Um, <laughs> That's my dad says. Like, you have to at least be – Life isn't fair, but in our family, like, you have to, like, take the next step for yeah, your family. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's just kind of putting others before yourself, yeah, which is what exactly saying. what Christ did. <laughs> and he, he told us in the Bible, you know, mm-hmm. be examples of him. So putting others, which is – 
easier said than done, but <laughs> putting others first, starting in your family, it'll help you when yeah. you Giving go out to the world mm-hmm. and you put I people that you don't even know. You know, if, if you can't put someone that you spent your entire life with before yourself, how are you going to put a random stranger before yourself? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, good point. That's what I, I literally couldn't like. <laughs> yeah. 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 About each other. You guys can finish <laughs> each other's sentences. It's awesome. And it's cool. It's just not worrying about what people think. And just fearing the Lord, like we said, we're all going to have to stand before God. He's going to judge us for what we do. And that's why we need to confess our sins and we need to get right. And I I think that it's really important, like you said, CJ, to take correction, to take discipline. Because the Bible says like discipline in the moment does not feel good. But the end, it produces a harvest of righteousness. Like while you're getting rebuked, it's the worst thing ever. You feel like everyone hates you. This is awful. You just want to run away. But how important it is, like that's why... We need the body. I love how you bring up how much we need church, Hebrews 10, 25, to not forsake the fellowship because we need each other, especially during COVID when the churches were shut down. I'm like, they had strip clubs and bars open, but the churches couldn't meet. I'm like, that makes no sense. And that's where you show that it shows the enemy. He doesn't want the truth being put out. So I love that you guys are doing what you do. And we want to help support and pray for you because we know the enemy is going to do everything to try to tear you down. Like he doesn't want you guys to do well he doesn't want you to reach others but that's why we can we can pray we can also help support so um anything else before we end though and ask where they can find you and stuff um anything else you'd like to share to our listeners i think the last thing i would add before we close out um was like not to backtrack but talking about like the under oath and not to go like a Mm -hmm. huge thing that we don't know where they were specifically and i'm not excusing their actions but being on the road definitely takes a toll on you and if you aren't strong in a even if you are a strong christian but you're not surrounding yourself and filling yourself with the spirit and if i didn't have my sisters i would definitely crash and burn and then you have a lot of people looking at you and you're like oh you're not a true christian i'm not going to support you anymore i knew i knew you weren't true in the lord when uh, we are all struggling on a path. So definitely pray for people in power. I mean, it even says to pray for your presidents, pray for your leaders, pray for your pastors, pray for people, your missionaries, pray for people that you know that are out there doing the work of the Lord because we are all, like every Christian, like it says in the Bible, why we're supposed to put the armor of God on Ephesians 6 because Satan's throwing fiery darts. So we don't know the situation that they're in. And unfortunately, that's the way that the cookie crumbled. I don't know how the the other better words to say it. definitely pray for people in the music industry because it is so draining and it takes so much much spotlight too yeah there's so much pressure to be the perfect christian to be do this right do this right and it's like just think of like how you live your life every day and no one's watching and then think of like how many people that not even just under oath but all of the bands all the christian bands um yeah how how many eyes are on them waiting waiting to like point the finger like i knew it then it's uh, now you're, you're comparing each other. Well, I'm a better Christian than you when we're supposed to be comparing ourselves mm-hmm. to Christ. And that's mm-hmm. what allows us to be built up. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely like thank you for bringing that up. I didn't get the chance to say that. But yeah, a big thing is just pray for um, band members and pray for um, uh, other Christians, mm-hmm. too. But um, yeah, you can follow us on all social media. I know that was the original question oh, that we we're going to go into. Um, and we run all of our own social media. So if you aren't comfortable enough to go up to us individually in person, um, social media is a, a more easier way. Yeah, it's a great platform to just, we are literally on every website yeah. that you can think of. Um, everything, the tag is the same, the GFM band, even our website, the GFM and all the links. Are there. So it, it's, we've tried to make it super easy to, be accessible to people because we do love talking to everybody and like we still are getting like we got messages today Mm -hmm. just trying to answer all of those and make sure that we're there for people because we do want to help people and uh, that's something we talked about in our patreon bible studies that you know a lot of people were like well i don't feel comfortable talking about my issues that i have in person um but i can type stuff online and we're like that's like don't be ashamed of that don't feel like you are less of a person for doing that because that's still communicating in like a great way and you know just because of covid stuff online has like become a thing like counseling is the thing i had to do an internship and a lot of it was online and you know it's doesn't make it any less real and so we really encourage people to just keep fighting and to stay strong and to if you need help to reach out to us because we have time obviously to answer you guys and that's why we do it we make time to answer um but also our listeners and our fan base team gfm it is more a family than just fans and 
Um, everybody is there for each other. And so if we're not available, somebody there is willing to talk. And mm-hmm. we have people now who are like accountability partners and they're like their own little groups and stuff and meet each Discord. other, yeah. which is super, super cool. So if you, I, I know it's like, something that was mentioned the other day is people were like well if you don't feel comfortable reaching out to a girl because it's if you're a guy you don't feel comfortable talking to one of the girls like you can talk to me I'm a guy I'm open like I'll be honest with you and stuff like I'll keep you straight like I'll hold you accountable and so it's really cool just to see everybody stepping up in our fan base and it's not just because we like the music it's because we like each other and we want the best for each other Amen. that's awesome mm-hmm. what about you Kevin any other questions no no, no? I'm good all right. Well, Kevin, do you want to actually pray for them? Sure. Before we end. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this time. And uh, just thank you for the girls and, and uh, their band and just the outreach that they have. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to bless them yes. uh, in that, in, in that, Lord, and bless them as you speak through them uh, to individuals and to groups and uh, from all different lifestyles, all different backgrounds, all different faiths even. Uh, we just pray that you would continue to give them the words to speak, Lord, that you would give them, uh, I think as David said, he, he prayed for wisdom beyond his years. I pray that you would give them wisdom beyond their years. They already have so much. It's very impressive to hear them talk and to to, to, to see their hearts and, and their faith in you um, at the same time as, as playing uh, metal music and being into that scene. And it's just so encouraging. And I pray, Lord, that they would continue in that. You would continue to give them wisdom beyond their years. Um, as they reach out to people uh, for your cause, for your sake, for your for your kingdom, Lord, so that, that that souls will be saved. <clears throat> Excuse me, that souls will be saved. And I pray, Lord, that you would also protect them. Lord, we pray for a hedge of protection around them. You would protect them from just the attacks of the enemy, attacks of people and their flesh, uh, just trying to discourage them, trying to, to derail them from following you. And I pray that they would stay strong in you, Lord. I pray that you would give them, uh, as you've given them a love for each other and a love for people, uh, I pray that they would just continue to grow in that and continue to walk in that. They continue to hold each other accountable. And uh, and I pray that they wouldn't become uh, one of those bands that, that starts off strong and, and gets caught up in, in all the fame and, and, and the, all that stuff. I pray that they would just continue to stay strong and close to you, Lord. And, uh, and that they would continue to run, run the race and fight the good fight uh, all the years of their life, whether it, it, it's through uh, continuing through metal music or through uh, the other avenues that they're pursuing with education and stuff like that. Uh, just wherever they go, wherever you, whatever plans you have for them, wherever you take them, continue to use them and bless them, Lord. And thank you for their encouragement. Uh, being in, in the metal scene, playing metal music, uh, while still loving you, rocking for you, Lord. Mm-hmm. And so we just thank you so much, and we ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, thank you, CJ, Maggie, and Lulu. You guys are awesome, and you were an encouragement to us, and I know this will be encouraging to our listeners. I encourage everyone to check out all your resources. They'll be in the description below, and then they can reach out to you if need be. But thanks again for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. If you haven't already, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you'd like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also follow us and see our behind the scenes on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. We also want to thank you to give a big shout out to our sponsors, Mission Heating and Cooling. You guys can check them out in the description below. And if you'd like to support Calvary Conversations, you can also press the support thing and support us. And as we have new guests and everything, we're going to have Joshua Lewis, who has been on the podcast before with the Remnant Radio, and he is going to come August 29th. So stay tuned for that. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless.